Okay, let me pull up my share screen and then we will be ready to go. We're supposed to have probably about six or seven students, but so far it's only you guys. Okay. Okay, so let's go through what we got going on today. Oh, I wish I was finished working for the day. This first week is usually pretty crazy. Okay, so we don't have that much to cover today. Next week, we're actually going to cover a lot more just because that's when we really get into the heart of accounting. Let me try again to share my webcam. There we go. Okay. So the agenda for today is course setup. Are you, I know Chantel's not a first quarter student. Alana, are you a first quarter student? Okay. Was it online? Okay. So the format is pretty much going to be the same. Homework expectations. The late policy. I am a little more strict in my policy just because with the counting, once you get behind, it is hard to catch up. It's not impossible. It's just going to take a lot of work on your part just because the course builds on each other. So week two is going to build on part of week one. And then we have week three definitely builds on week two throughout the entire quarter. So it is, it's possible. It just will take some time. Okay. And then we're going to go over what accounting is and is not and why study accounting. Excuse me, allergies. So the first poll is, if money was no object, where in the world would you rather go for a vacation? A trip around Italy, Hawaii, tour of Australia, or just stay at home? Italy, stay at home. That I have not had that one yet. In all three of my classes, I have not had stay at home. Ooh, Scotland is a very good choice. I am for my, my for my mom for Christmas. We got her a DNA kit to see about ancestry, and they sent us two, and we couldn't send the other one back. They wouldn't allow that, so I took it. And I am actually 50 some odd percent British, which I am extremely happy with. So I would definitely do Scotland as well. But I'm mainly, based on the genealogy I've done, I'm mainly Welsh. So, oh, I would love to go to Glasgow. Personally, I'd rather go to Edinburgh and go to the vaults and get nice and scared since there's no electricity running through them. But that's just me. <laughs> I like watching people get scared and then laughing because it's hilarious. Okay, the setup of the course. Let me share my screen. If I can go into the course. I'm going to switch it to the student view because what I have is the instructor view. So I see everything that's there. Hopefully, there we go. So for the student view, 
again, of course, you're going to have your home page. And then we have where all the modules are. So each week you'll have to go through each of the items. There are, excuse me, starting next week, there are assignment videos. You do not have to watch the videos. But they should help with the homework because what I do is there's t in the textbook, there's A problems and B problems. I work the problem set you're not completing for homework. So for next week, you're doing 2-1A, 2-5A, 2-9A through 2-12A. So I work the B problems, which are very similar to what you have to do for homework. That way it provides a lecture type compo component so that you can see exactly how to go through the problems. I do that for the entire quarter. So it gives you a help to when you do your homework because accounting is really hard to learn if you're just sitting staring at the book and reading. That is not going to help. It's good. The book has good examples. But a lot of students have found that having the actual videos helps them understand and help them comprehend the actual work. Make sure there's no questions. Yes, they are basically examples, which is, I think they're helpful. A lot of other students have told me they're helpful, but some students refuse to watch them. So it's really student, it's really student preference there. I would give it a try week two and see if it helps. If not, don't use them. I've had one student struggle through the entire quarter until about week seven. Yes, they do. I had one student struggle through the almost the entire quarter, and I asked him multiple times, have you watched the videos? He honestly told me no, because they're not worth any points. He did not take his time to do it because they weren't worth any points. And after he watched one, he's like, man, I wish I watched them the, the, for the first part of the quarter. I would have actually understood how to do it. So again, completely optional. You can, you can, what some students do is now that you have an actual physical book, you can look at the book while I go through the video and that way you can see what I do and compare it to what the book says. But then you can also look at your pro homework problem and see, okay, this is what she did for here. So let's see what our problem wants us to do. The two, prob the two sets of problems, they're almost identical. It's normally just the numbers that are off. So that will be extremely, at least I find it extremely helpful. So that's one thing to help you do. Also, at, on the home page, there will be announcements set up about your homework assignments. I've actually had a bachelor level student go, oh, I didn't know there was announcements to, to look at. The announcements, I will give you what's due, what's due when, reminders about the midterm, the final, I actually posted an announcement about the textbook because I did not know students got physical copies this quarter. The bookstore did not tell me that. Normally, it's, it's been ebooks. And ebooks are really challenging for accounting. So that's why I posted that announcement up there. Um, let's see. Discussions. I do post a rubric for your discussions each week that shows you how to, how I'm going to be grading. So in case you don't know how to find it, you would click on the discussion and then click up here on the little cogs wheel and then show the rubric. And it's gonna show you exactly how I'm going to grade your rubric every week. So that's going to help hopefully, so you know what I'm looking for. When it comes to references and or support, please provide more than just 
the URL. That is a pet peeve. Students just try to post the URL and that's all they're doing for a citation. If you go to your week one, 1 1.6 is a reference cheat sheet. It's something I put together. It goes books, it gives you how to cite books, and then some examples. And then it goes through journal articles, newspaper articles online, and then websites. If you struggle, that's fine, but at least try to do it correctly. I do do weekly announcements, Alana. They are automatically posted at 12.01 Monday morning. I have them set up for the entire quarter already, just because I will be going out of town. Let's see, the Wednesday of week six, and I won't be back until the Thursday of week seven. So I have all my announcements set up in advance. So they will automatically post. And then on in week four or week five, there will automatically, with the announcement, there will be one regarding the midterm project and it will have a review sheet automatically attached for you to download in a word form. Okay, Chantel, you may not have a physical book because when you took the class, they were still using eBooks. So you may have to check with the bookstore. So, because I know on Tuesday's conference, everybody said they had an actual physical textbook. So you would definitely have to contact the bookstore for that. Um, what else do we need to cover with the course setup? Um, let's see, I have the, that posted twice. Okay. Are there any other questions about the setup? I do have in the announcement section a link to go to Amazon where you can purchase a used book for around $20, but you could also print out 10 pages of the ebook a day for free, except for the cost of ink. So, discussions it's the typical Wednesday night for your initial post, Sunday for your responses. I usually post a lot of questions in the responses, and I try to do a lot of outside sources. So hopefully that will help encourage the discussion. You do only have to do two replies, but it helps with the class, it helps with the flow of the class, it helps with everybody engaging and getting to know each other if you do more than just the minimum requirement. Even instructors have a minimum requirement that we actually have to do in the discussion post. But I always try to respond to almost everybody in the class, try to do some questions, try to play some devil's advocate a little, just to get some more discussion going. Assignments, all the forms have been created for you, which is really nice. So if you go into the assignment, it will have a form for you to download in Excel. So I'm just gonna preview this one. And so it has everything that you need to fill in. So you would fill it in, save it, and then submit it as an assignment. And so, every, so all you have to do is literally fill in the blank, do the addition subtraction, save it and send it back. So it's, it's extremely helpful. Necessary software. You need at least Microsoft Excel. If you have numbers, which is Apple's version of Excel, that is fine. I have no problems accepting assignments in that format because I have a Mac computer. So it would not be any problem for me to download it, grade it, send it back. On your assignments, what I do is once I grade, once I start grading an assignment, I will look at the file. Any errors will be highlighted, the cell will be yellow. And I'll put a comment saying, 
double check the math or this is the wrong account or it should be going to this particular asset instead of a liability. So it's going to help give you guidance on what you're doing wrong. That way you can learn from your mistakes. And any assignment that you get below a 73% and it, sh and it looks like you're actually trying, you're not just turning it in half completed because you ran out of time, I will let you redo it and resubmit it for a higher grade based on the comments I give you. That way you have the opportunity to learn from your mistakes, which is what you have to do in this class since everything builds on the previous week. So I found it extremely helpful when I took this class that I was allowed to look over my work, see what I did wrong, ask questions. The online version is perfectly fine. I can still, as long as I can download it and grade it and send it back to you, I'm fine. So even if you have to scan the picture, scan the assignment in or send it as a picture, I will take it. It just will be harder to get actual comments and actual feedback on it because I will have to figure out a way to manipulate the picture or manipulate the scan image. So. Or if you need to send it as a PDF. I have, for my grad school classes, I had to have the expensive version of Adobe. So I have the ability to put comments on PDF files. So I could do that as well. Again, the assignment videos are optional. Office hours. excuse me, office hours are Wednesdays from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. I know a lot of students work during that time, but I will also hold them by appointment. So if you're really struggling with a concept or an assignment and you need to meet with me virtually in conferences like we're doing now, let me know and we'll try to work something around our schedules. My job is to help you guys understand Accounting One and to be successful in the class. That's what I'm here to do. One of my biggest pet peeves is students that I know are struggling do not take the time to ask for help. I feel it's a waste of their time by taking the course because they're not getting the knowledge they need. And it's a waste of my time to grade their assignments and put comments on their assignments with them not, with them seemingly, for at least from my point of view, not trying to understand or not making the effort to get outside help. I don't know situations unless students tell me, so I could be completely interpreting it wrong, but that's the, at least that's the way it feels from my point of view. Let's see, make sure I for, don't forget things. Homework expectations, how to get help. You can text me, you can email me, you can call me, I live out a ways, so usually text is the best way because it goes to my cell phone and my computer, and I get an email. So text or email through Canvas is probably the best ways to get in touch with me. Um, but if you call, it goes to my Google phone, which again comes directly to my cell phone. Due dates. All the assignments in this class are due Sunday night at 11.59. Some classes have a Friday due date. Some have Saturday due dates to help the instructor get grading done on time. Mine are on Sunday nights because I work from home. So Monday mornings, I usually spend most of the morning grading and getting caught up on that. Discussion requirements, we already went through that. Citation references, again, we've already gone through that. Are there any questions up to this point? I'm gonna make sure everybody understands requirements and what I would like. Okay. Late policy. This is a question that is actually on your conference quiz. It is 10% off 
for the first week. So if it's due on Sunday, on Monday, I start taking late points off. Unless you've actually contacted me if there's a family emergency, if there's been a big storm and they shut your, the internet shut got, internet got turned off because of the storm, or if something prevents you from completing your homework, let me know and we'll see what we can do to work around my late policy. Um, after the first week, it is 20% off. And then after that, it is 50% off. I had a student that turned in almost every assignment three to four weeks late last quarter. If everything was on time, she would have passed the class. Nothing was communicated with me, so I could not work around my late policy. So the key is communication with me as your instructor. That is a big thing. Keep your, all of your instructors informed on if anything happens. Attendance requirements. Harrison recently changed the attendance requirements. Last quarter and previously it was you had to be active two for you had to be inactive for two weeks straight and then you were dropped from that particular class. The policy has now changed to as long as you're active in one class completely, you will stay enrolled in all of your classes. Again, in this class, it's okay to run a little late. If you get, if we're in week five and you're just now turning in your week two, it's going to be a little tricky to get caught up. Not impossible, but it will take a lot of effort and time on your part. So try not to get behind if something happens and you get behind, talk to me. So the second poll, what is the late policy for this course since it is on your conference quiz? There's been a lot of confusion on this one so far. It is D. I've had previous students that are in my upper level classes say C just because they look for the 10% off which is why I threw ten, two of them with 10% off. It is D. Okay, we're not going to do this just because it's pretty, it didn't go over that well Tuesday night. But what do you guys, you can type it in the chat. What do you currently know about accounting? Anybody know anything about accounting coming into this? Not as much as you'd like to. Okay. It's, I actually like this class just because I find it extremely interesting how we can apply accounting to our everyday life. Okay, accounts payable, accounts receivable. We'll definitely be touching those starting next week. Those come into play on our assignment next week. What would you like to know about accounting? This is such a huge question. This accounting is so broad. Terminology, okay, I have something to help with that. Okay. How to balance spreadsheets, when to add and subtract. I actually have a little cheat for that. A previous student's sister-in-law sent her this form, which is from accountingcoach.com. Great resource, by the way. It should be, I think it's on your syllabus. But in week two, 
I have a reference. Uh, nope, that's not it. I'll have to upload it. It's a debit credit cheat sheet. Let me pull it up real quick for you guys so you can see it. I have way too many files on my computer. Turn off Siri. Let's see. I have way too much stuff. Oh, there it is. I will post this once we are done with the conference so you can see it. It's basically a list. It's a list that goes through the equation, the types of accounts, which ones are increased with a debit and which ones are decreased with a credit. It's a little confusing, but if you look, debit is under is bolded under the asset. That just means these accounts, such as cash, you're going to increase with a debit. Your expenses, like your rent expense, your mortgage expense, your groceries expense, those are all going to be increased with a credit. So it's a little different than your checking account and what you're used to. So let me get back. Yes and no. Okay. Yeah, it's it's yes and no. Depends on the depends on the side of the equation. We're definitely going to go into that more next week in our conferences. Just because it is such a huge misconception sometimes. So, accounting basically is a way to keep track of financial transactions. So we could use it if you went to, uh, that is, are you, do you work at a bank? Used to, okay. Believe me, I've been there. I used to work at a call center for a bank when I was doing my undergrad. And I could have sworn accounting would be the exact same way my bank account was, the exact same thing I used to tell my clients about. Unfortunately, it's not. So it took some time for my accounting one class. I actually had my father as my instructor when Harrison used to be Indiana Business College. So I actually had him as my instructor. One of the first things he told us in class, you have to forget everything you think you know about debits and credits. Because in accounting, debit means left, credit means right. That's all there is to it. Left, right. So that's pretty much all of what debit and credit means for accounting. So, or if you go, see, if you go through the drive through and pick up, I don't know, pick up Kentucky Fried Chicken for everybody for dinner. You're going to decrease your cash account and increase your food expense. So every account we use, every transaction we have is going to affect at least two accounts, which is referred to down here at the bottom by the double entry method. So we're going, no matter what we do, there's going to be at least two accounts used. So for example, if you had a bank company, a bank customer come in and they want you to explain their account and you see they spent $300 to gap for clothes for their kids for school. The clothing expense is going to increase because they spent $300, but their cash balance is going to decrease because they no longer have that money. So again, we're going to go in more into that next week. We're going, and accounting is where you use different financial statements and documents. We're going to use the general ledger, which is where we keep track of transactions, of the accounts used. So in the gap, um, in the gap example, we're going to, 
we are going to trying to think through that example again. We're going to show that we used our expense. So we're going to debit our clothing expense, which is going to show that it is increasing. And then we're going to credit our cash, which means it's decreasing. And then that information is going to be transferred to the, the general ledger, which is where it's the general ledger reminds me of our checkbook ledger where we keep track of the transactions. So where we keep the math and we do all of the deductions. That is essentially what we're going to be doing with the ledger. We're going to subtract all of our amounts used. And then we're going to take that and transfer it to the financial statements. Page 33, which I believe is chapter 2, gives you a great look at the financial statements. It gives you a basic look of what we're going to deal with until after the midterm. So unfortunately, then it changes. But up until that point, our financial statements are going to look exactly like page 33. So that is something to look at if you want to look ahead. Part of the financial statements, they're actually going to tell us whether or not the company is making money. It's going to help us with investments. So it's going to tell potential investors, okay, is the company making money? If so, how much are they making? Nobody wants to invest in a company that's just going to lose money because then their investment is going to go down the toilet. So that's one thing. And then we've usually done by a bookkeeper or an accountant. Usually I have students in this class that are bookkeepers. So they're used to doing one aspect of the accounting picture, but not the entire spectrum. They deal with only accounts receivables, which is the money that customers owe a business, or accounts payable, which is the money the business owes other businesses. So we will definitely get into those more next week, and especially at next week's conference. Are there any questions about that? I know I didn't touch too much on the actual business of doing accounting, because we're definitely going to touch that next week. OK. Accounting is not, again, it is not your checking account. Credit does not mean increase in your cash account. Debit does not mean you're going to decrease your cash account. So we have to forget everything we know about our checking account. It is not about numbers. I don't know how many students start the class with I'm going to do horrible in this class because I am no good at numbers. Excuse me, I had a procedure done on my neck yesterday and so my mouth is a little dry today. So it is not about numbers. We do more than numbers. Yes, you're going to do math, but most of the math we're going to do is addition and subtraction. That's pretty much it until we get to week, week eight. And then we're going to throw in some multiplication. Mo most of accounting is about whether or not you can get the transactions into the right accounts. Again, going back to the gap example, it's whether or not you're going to use your cash account and credit your cash account to show that you're decreasing it and increasing your clothing expense account. It is, it is mainly about making sure you get things in the correct account. And one of the things that I do for students, if you get stuck, if you come to a spot and you can't balance, you've looked at it for hours, you've had somebody else look at it and you still cannot balance, 
email me the file within Canvas. Don't submit it as an assignment because I don't grade every day. Email it to me as an attachment. And then I will look at, say, can you please look at this for me? I will look at it, put comments on it like I'm going to grade it, but then send it back to you with the comments. That way you can figure out where you're going wrong, redo it, and that way you can get a higher grade and hopefully not have to do a resubmission. So it's one way to help you get a better grade. I respond to my email Monday through Friday, usually within 24 hours. If it's on the weekend, if it's Saturday morning, I should respond to you Saturday or if it's Saturday mid-afternoon. Usually after 5 o'clock on Saturdays, you will not hear a response until Monday because I do not work on Sundays. That day is reserved for our family. Okay. So, so are there any questions of that? Okay, now I have had students try this and I know it does not work and I can tell when you're rushing your assignments. I have taught this class for 10 years, something like that. I've lost count. You cannot get this homework done in a half hour. This first week, yes. After this week, you cannot get your homework done if you start it at 1130 Sunday night. I can tell when you're rushing. I can tell when you're not putting effort into it. So you need to start, preferably, at least look at the assignment Monday or Tuesday. That way you know what's coming and you can kind of guesstimate how much time it will take you. So you may be able, this first couple of weeks, you may be able to start it Sunday morning. But if you get stuck and you need my help, I won't see it until Monday, unless there is a dire emergency on Saturday and I'm forced to work on Sunday. So, because Harrison's policy is instructors have to check in to their classes at least once on the weekend. For me, that's Saturday. So just to give you a heads up there, if you send me an email Saturday night or Sunday going, I am completely stuck. I cannot get anywhere. I ready to throw the computer out the window. Can you please look at this? That is one of those extenuating circumstances where the late policy will be waived as long as it's within a reasonable time submitted. So, but still, at least try your best. And then if you get stuck, send it to me. Again, the videos are there to help you walk through it. So that... Hopefully, you won't get too stuck too badly. I've had students go great through the quarter. The assignments are perfect, almost. They get to the comprehensive problems in weeks, nine, weeks 10 and 11. And then they tank because they get started too late on the assignments. They don't have time to get them done. They get stuck and they just give up. If you get to that point, Send me the file. Say, can you please look at this? Please tell me where I'm going wrong. And I'm more than happy to do that for any of my classes. I've done it for students that had me in accounting one, but don't have me in accounting two. I want to help you guys learn the material. Why study accounting? Do we have any accounting majors? Yep. One accounting major. Alana's yes. Okay. So for those that may not be going into accounting or may be going into healthcare management and could care less about knowing accounting, this class may be required to graduate. So you may not be interested in accounting, but it's required if you want to graduate you have to take the class and you have to pass the class with a 73% or higher, or you get to repeat it. So, and just to give you a little incentive for this quarter, they are working on revamping the class 
which I don't know when it will take effect. It may take effect in winter. It may take take effect in spring. So, and I have no idea what the new class may look like. So, if you don't want to have to potentially get another textbook or potentially have to take this with a different instructor that may not provide the videos, it is, I would definitely try to at least ask for help if you get stuck. Again, one of my biggest pet peeves with teaching is students that need help that don't ask. So, okay. The wrap up. I didn't think this would be a very long meeting. I scheduled an hour and a half just because I didn't know how long it was going to take. So office hours are Wednesdays from two to four. Or by appointment, again, most students work from two to four. So if you need to meet with me, I do virtual conferences like this with students one on one and we work through problems or we work through their homework that they're struggling with and we explain things that way. So if you need to meet, let me know. Don't just say I need to meet, period. Try to give me a couple of days, times that would work for you. That way we can go ahead and schedule something immediately once I get your email. Assign again, assignment videos in week two. Again, those are not mandatory. They may help you. They may not help you. It's completely up to you. Discussion posts, do Wednesday night for your initial post. This week and next week, well, this week you have a discussion. I need to look at next week's discussion and see if we're going to keep that or not. When we have a conference, now the KWL chart was basically the what do you know, what do you want to know. So we did, we did that verbally in the chat room. So that one's not that big of a deal. Um. So for your discussions, I'm going to see when we hold a meeting, when we're holding the conferences, we may or may not hold, do the discussions, depending on if it's going to help increase your knowledge of accounting. So when we do have them, the initial post is due by Wednesday. Again, try to provide references just so that you can get the practice of it because getting APA style is extremely tricky. In my last master's program, starting the first semester, the professors hit it hard and almost every assignment I got back was wrong. My citations were off because I was still basing them on MLA, which is why I gave you the little cheat sheet in the class. Your homework for next week, if you want to go ahead and get started, is 21A, 25A, 29A through 212A. 29 is the start of the problem where you're actually recording the transactions. 10, 11, and 12, you're actually doing the financial statements that go with 2-9A. So it's not four completely separate problems, it's just a continuation of 2-9. And again, page 33 in your textbook has exactly how you do the financial statements and what goes on the financial statements. Because part of 2-5, you're going to state whether the account is an expense, liability, revenue, asset, owner's equity, and then list the financial statement that goes with it. So... There's a hint on where to go to help you with that problem. So are there any questions, anything we didn't cover, anything you thought we should cover? Anything I went too fast over? We have one no. Kristen, since you joined us late, if you want, I can go back over the beginning of the presentation for you. It is completely up to you. And I will email you guys the password that you need to access the conference assignment.
And if you guys don't have any questions, we're done. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Thank you. It's just the, the doctor put some numbing medication in the nerves, so it's it's annoying more than anything else right now. <laughs> <laughs>